new year, new project. 2018 is going to be all about learning how to make homemade soaps and other, you know, home and beauty products too, just because I already have the supplies. For Christmas, I bought myself over $400 worth of soap making supplies from a soap soap uh, making company, as well as a bunch of other, you know, molds and just basic gear that you need to go along for the cold process soap making. And I'm really excited to get learning on this new skill. For me, one of the things about the kind of modern homesteading that interests me the most is just the the skill building of, you know, traditional knowledge, basically. In the same way that I love being able to grow my own food for myself, I really like the idea of being able to create other things for myself too. And, you know, something like soap is something that we use every day. And, you know, Ian and I, we're not especially snobby about what we will use, but maybe I'd like to be a little bit more. <laughs> especially because I have all this, all this, you know, great supplies to work with. If I can make a just really nice, you know, all natural homemade soap, why not, right? Soap making is a little bit intimidating because it does use a pretty, <laughs> pretty uh, dangerous chemical of lye, which, you know, we've all seen Fight Club, right? Like, oh no, like, gonna burn our skin off with it, like, you know, it, it's something that definitely makes you cautious about getting started on on the whole thing, but, you know, I've, I've started to do some research into what's involved in it, and it seems like as long as you're just being aware of the fact that the soap making process can be dangerous, you know, you, you can do it fairly safely. With the garden kind of, you know, <laughs> buried under snow, this is the perfect time of year for me personally to start working on, you know, building new skills. I feel like I don't have too bad of a homesteader skill set so far. I mean, you know, I, I know how to sew, I know how to like knit, <laughs> I know how to grow food. But it really seems like, you know, having chickens and making your own soap are like up there for like the, the good to brag about ones. So pretty excited to be like, oh yeah, yeah, that's soap. Yeah, I made it. Like, no big deal. <laughs> But honestly, I mean, you know, half of the fun of the homesteading concept is the fact that your hobbies and the things that you create are practical things. And it is a way that Ian and I really do kind of keep our budget down. The fact that we're spending all of our time and money on growing food means that we, we don't have a lot of time and money to spend on things that cost a lot more money. And, you know, same idea with the soap. I know that, like, obviously I've, I've spent a lot of money. You know, like, I probably already am going, like, into the $600 range for all the supplies that I've gotten so far. But it's, it's going to be something that is, is going to bring value. You know, I spend this money and I end up with, you know, a, a mountain of soap and, you know, it's, it, there's, there's worse ways. <laughs> there's worse ways to spend the money, I feel, at least personally. So on to the fun of uh, unboxing what a uh, 400 plus dollar uh, soap order looks like. So I'm, I'm excited to open these boxes up. I'm Canadian, so I ordered these supplies from uh, Voyager uh, Soap. It's it's out of the Vancouver area, which means it's closer to me. I had a hard time finding a place to be able to get soap making supplies. Now that I have this stuff, I'm sure a lot of things can be sourced locally in town, but I couldn't find any place locally to get lye. and. It's also really difficult to ship lye. To get th this, I had to actually get it shipped by a company that, you know, normally we just use the Canadian Postal Service to ship everything, but they don't, you know, it's a dangerous chemical and they don't ship it. And also because of that, 
Uh, there's lots of an American companies that are really common for when I was doing research of where to get stuff for soap making that just wasn't available to me as a Canadian. So even though this is the company that I got it from, you know, I, there's there's lots of different places and I, I know a lot of you that watch these videos aren't Canadian so this probably isn't going to be your source but in the link below I'll I'll leave a link to their website just in case you're interested in also ordering too. So these boxes weigh like a lot like 50 pounds because I did order a lot of soap. I, I have plans to work through a book that I purchased and there I wanted to make about 12 batches of soap and so that meant I had to get a lot of a lot of oils which actually weighs a bunch. So I'm gonna start with a small one here Ooh, just because it's it's a little bit lighter. So in here I have a kilogram of lye and I, I really appreciate how this is packed up. The container is like taped shut that I can see and it's like a nice hard container. This And then it's in another bag just in case anything happened when it was shipping because you know if this spills that's gonna get kind of sketchy. Um, one thing that I ordered that is like a, a little bit weird for the soap making is I got a, a lip balm kit. This has a, a lip balm base, a couple flavors, and then a bunch of different tins and instructions. And I also got a second, like this one's a lip balm and then this one's a lip gloss. And then I got a few more uh, lip, lip tubes for it. And this I ordered just because what I'm going to be making is, is a not kid friendly kind of activity. And I know that my daughter will want to be involved in, in making some of the stuff with mommy. So I ordered up these lip balms because I know this will be a really simple thing to be able to make with her. And so I'm, I'm excited to experiment with these and, you know, do something fun with her that's a little bit safer than, you know, letting my toddler dig around in my lye bucket. So one of the recipes called for an argan oil. So I got a half cup of argan oil here, which was a little bit pricey. I was like, oh, now I know why homemade soap is so expensive at craft fairs. You know, <laughs> that when you're using like some more expensive oils, it definitely, it, it adds up. And then this here is an Australian pink clay. And I don't know if the color's coming through on the camera there, but this is a really gorgeous kind of dark, pink color and this is like a natural dye that you can use in your soaps. I'm I'm excited to try to do all of the soaps that I make naturally, not like using like an artificial coloring and an artificial scent, uh, which leads to the next thing I have in here, which is I really should have ordered this when when Ian was around to get his veto power on it because I ordered a bunch of essential oils and this is a part of the reason why this order is so expensive. A lot of the soap recipes that I was looking at call for an ounce of essential oils, which, you know, that's that's quite a bit. So, you know, you need a lot. And especially for, you know, how I'm talking about doing the 12 batches. And so I was, I did dig through and tried to find a few of the essential oils that are scents that I like that are a little bit more affordable. I was, you know, I was definitely checking the price before I ordered stuff and I'll kind of be doing my scents based on what I can blend together without it costing like a hundred dollars in oils. But I got a cup of orange oil in here, which I'm excited about because I think that this will also be a nice scent for doing like homemade cleaners, which is another thing that I want to learn more about and experiment more with this year. So there's a big massive bottle there and you can see they, they packed it like really well. They're definitely wanting to be careful that n nothing is breaking these, you know, more expensive uh, essential oils. And then I got a couple smaller ones in here. I got a, a cinnamon leaf and a black pine. And these are both uh, 50 mil bottles. And I got a couple more 50 mil bottles here. This one's a, uh, I have no idea how to say this, but uh, ylang ylang. <laughs> oil and then also uh, eucalyptus oil and I got one more I had like 
20 in my cart and then I went and saw my total and I was like okay we need to <laughs> we need to thin it down a little and this one here is uh, 100 mils of lavender so you know I mean how classic is lavender so I definitely wanted to get a little bit of a bigger bottle on that one and then in here I also I bought a metal thermometer just because this wasn't anything that I had around the house and it, you need to be a little bit careful about what you use for the soap making people were saying so you know hopefully this will stand up I don't have to be reordering stuff all the time Okay, on to big box. Ugh. It's like, it's hard to even slide. So in the boxes, they have like a bunch of paper on the top just to make sure that everything isn't gonna be shifting around. They actually, like, it's crazy how much they pack this stuff. They are definitely being very careful that these things are not spilling and not making a mess. I, I personally, you know, this isn't necessarily how much plastic I, I'd personally like. I'd, I'd prefer if I could have gone to the store and just gotten this stuff and not had it to be so overpacked, just, you know, for waste reduction reasons. But if you're concerned personally about, like, how stuff is going to come, this stuff is coming very safely packed. Like, the, they're definitely, they're being cautious. So in here, I got a big bag of activated charcoal powder, which I'm excited for using as a dye. And I, I've seen a few other recipes kicking around for this that, you know, now that I have it, I can experiment with it. I have a bunch of calendula petals. I've, I've tried to grow this before and I've had no luck, but I know that it's really soothing to skins like if you do an infusion it's something that gets used all the time in like baby butt cream my hands love those all natural diaper creams so i'm gonna kind of replicate one with this and you know make a nice nice hand balm for myself so i got a big bag this i've used a little bit of uh, i made some beeswax wraps but this is just some like little beeswax pellets and this is a one pound bag that I got of that. So I originally only wanted to get a kilogram of lye because that was plenty but then when I found out that you can't you have to like pay for this extra expensive shipping from to get the lye to get carried and I hadn't been able to find a place in town to get it I decided that I'm just gonna get a ton of lye so I bought three kilograms of the lye in hopes that you know this will be enough that I don't have to buy any more lye for you know the next million years unless I start you know like a soap making company or something which I really shouldn't that's a bad idea <laughs> but yeah so lots of lye Got a bottle of avocado oil here and the oil it's in a bag and then it's like also sealed and I opened up one of these and even underneath this like tape seal is like a piece of like the plastic foam that's like been sealed on too so these are definitely coming like pretty leak proof like in this bag I can see a little bit of oil but like I, I think you'd have to do a lot to these boxes to have these just turn into a big oily mess. I got a tub of Benonite clay. I, I want to try doing some homemade deodorants and this is usually in it and it's also used as a colorant and kind of like you know a nice additive to soaps so got a little bit of a bigger tub of that. Basically Ian wasn't there so I got bigger sizes of everything. <laughs> I got a jojoba oil and a castor oil. This was in, in a bunch of the recipes. So, you know, I kind of, I got the sizes according to the recipes that I want to be trying. And then I got a shea butter here, just a little tub. This stuff was actually pretty expensive. So I was definitely cautious about not ordering way more than what the recipes were calling for. 
and I also have a mango butter. So, you know, some, some fun stuff to play with. I'm sure there'll be a little bit after I do the, the soap recipes that I have, but those will be good for trying to do some like creams and, and things like that. Oh, here's the heavy parts. These are three kilogram tubs. So I got one of tallow. The book that I'm using, that I'm going to be following, a lot of the recipes call for either tallow or lard. So, you know, I just, I ordered it because I was already ordering from the company and I knew that it was going to be like one that, you know, isn't, doesn't have any weird scents or anything because they're specifically like deodorized for using in cosmetics. And so then this is another tub of lard. And a big old bucket of coconut oil. And finally, a big thing of olive oil. So basically, for the recipes that I'm going to be following, like these four ingredients are the main soap bases. And then, you know, some of these other oils that I have bump them up. But pretty excited <laughs> you know I've, I've been I've been trying to get everything together so I can kind of start to do my first recipe and you know I'm I'm really excited to get going and get working on doing all this learning so if you're a learner too and you know you're watching this video because you want to know what $400 of soap making supplies gets you subscribe because I'm going to be doing a series of videos kind of just tracking how I learn like I want I want to film the first couple of recipes that I do you know show show myself like how how it feels to do it for the first time you know rather than a pro telling you like what it should feel like <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm excited to stock up my basement with a bunch of handmade soap and be set for gifts for the next year and to, you know, add this really fun kind of, you know, I'd, I'd say essential homesteading skill onto the resume. And, you know, hopefully you guys will enjoy coming along and learning with me too.